always had a bit of a soft spot for Maserati. The styling, the way they sound, and ultimately that Italian charm. For the most part though, they weren't really cars you just want to get in and drive. But now, the MC20 hopes to turn that on its head. It's nearly 20 years since we last saw a mid-engine Maserati with the Enzo-derived MC12, but that's obviously an absolute unicorn. This new MC20 is at least a little bit more down to earth, and it's a huge moment in the company's history. The Gran Turismo's grown old and faded away, and they've been selling more diesel saloons and SUVs than anything else of late. So thanks to our friends at Alexander's Prestige, we're about to find out if the MC20 has what it takes to relight Maserati's fire. in the car that essentially hopes to give Maserati its mojo back after all these years. And today is the first time I've even seen one in the flesh and it is a really impressive looking bit of kit, it's super cool. It gets loads of attention in this colour. Obviously it's something really different, it's not that whole, oh, look a Ferrari. Oh wow, that's cool. What is it? It's got dihedral doors that open up so it, it really does look like a through and through supercar. And when you get inside, you sit super low. But the quality in here is more than I would have expected from Maserati. Everything's super solid. It's just a nice place to be. This steering wheel is absolutely perfect. Really nicely sculpted with Alcantara and this super smooth satin carbon fiber. Everything that you touch, like the paddles of that really nice carbon as well. Really solid static paddles. But what we really want to know is what it's like to drive. If we twist Maserati's version of Ferrari's Manatino down here into Corsa, let's find out. So what have we got first of all? Well this car is Maserati from the ground up, which is a refreshing change. Nothing's just borrowed from Ferrari or Alfa Romeo or even Fiat, like the old plastic keys. So we've got Maserati's own three litre twin turbo V6, mid-mounted. And whether this is a coincidence or not, I don't know, but it has, to the exact horsepower, the same power output as the MC12, 621 brake horsepower. But it actually has more torque being turbocharged. So here, second gear, it just pulls out of there. Now it's rear wheel drive, but even with all that torque, traction is unbelievable. Now it was a little skittish on cold tyres earlier and it does weigh less than 1500 kilos so with that sort of power it is quick. It's actually quite a savage experience just clawing for grip. <laughs> Boy does it go. I mean you'd expect nothing less from the figures 0 to 62 under 2.9 seconds Top speed, 202 miles an hour. Yeah, it feels it. As for the chassis, we're sat in a full carbon monocoque. So as well as being quite light, it's super rigid as well. The suspension's a Bilstein Damptronic setup, which adjusts through the different modes. So we've got GT mode, which is just for cruising. Sport mode, which is a little more firm. And then we're in Corsa now, which is the most hardcore mode. Sharper throttle, slightly more aggressive gear shifts with that little kick in the back from the 8 speed dual clutch. And there is a suspension button in the middle of this dial as well, so that no matter which mode you're in, if you're in GT mode, you can firm up the suspension. Or if you're in Sport or Corsa, it acts like the bumpy road mode button in a Ferrari where it just slackens it off a bit. So that's what I've got now. We're in Corsa mode with the dampers in mid because it is really firm in full-on mode. But it is livable in the softest mode, it is still quite firm, but it could play sort of firm GT car if you need it to. And on a 
track. In its firmest setting, it must be unbelievable because the handling is unreal on this thing. To me, this feels much more McLaren than it does Ferrari, which is not what you might expect. It, it kind of makes me feel like if Lotus made a supercar, the turning is unbelievable. It stays so flat. The, the way it catapults out of corners for rear wheel drive. definitely very firm so you get thrown around a lot on these bumpy roads. I think it could do with being a little softer for British roads if I'm honest. Brakes, we've got carbon ceramics and Brembo so no problems there. And another similarity to McLaren's and something which I like about McLaren's is the brake pedal feel. They're not grabby, if you want to stop hard you've got to press them hard so they're really easy to modulate when you're driving quick. Another thing I should mention actually, which will be helping it get out of the corners so well, is it comes standard with a mechanical limited slip diff, but this has the optional electronically controlled diff. It just, just dicks. 621 horsepower, fully pinned in second gear out of that corner, and nothing, it just goes. What don't I like? Well, I know it sounds like I'm totally raving about it, and to drive quick, there is a lot to rave about. But at first, I wasn't really sure I was gonna get into it. Because at low speeds, it doesn't really give you much back. There isn't a lot of noise there. And unfortunately, really, when you're going quick, there isn't a lot of noise either. It's not the nicest noise, is it? It's just quite cool and characterful all the turbo blow-off noises when you let off. But it's not like having a screaming V8 or V10 or V12 behind you, is it? But it's the way of the world now. None of its rivals sound that great either. But it is nice that they've at least been able to inject a bit of character with those turbo noises with the gear shifts in course that give you that little kick. It is a great gearbox. And yeah, criticism is that it is very firm. But what it means is when you're driving fast on a road like this, it isn't boring. It's always... <laughs> sort of moving around, keeping you on your toes. It feels exciting. Despite there not being that much noise, it really is exciting do have to really push on to unlock that character, that's the only downside. So yeah, it's not perfect, but it's great fun, it's much more fun than I thought it was going to be when I was just driving it slowly earlier. It does have a bit of a character of its own, and it's something different, it's just nice that someone else has come along and entered this segment with a fresh choice. If you don't want a Ferrari, a McLaren, a Lamborghini, whatever, if you want to be a bit different, here it is. This is Maserati's first stab at a supercar in the modern era at least. This is pretty damn impressive. Well, that escalated quickly. It took me about five minutes from thinking I wasn't really going to gel with the MC20 to absolutely raving about it. And all it took was grabbing it by the scruff and driving it hard. I guess it's the opposite of what you might expect from a Maserati and the fact that it isn't anything to write home about at low speed, but it really shines as you start to press on and it doesn't have any glaring flaws. And when I say it feels like a McLaren or as if Lotus made a supercar, I mean that as a serious compliment. It definitely isn't as supple as a McLaren over a bumpy English B-Road, but with the way it moves around and the very vocal turbos constantly whooshing behind you, I think the MT20 might be more exciting on the road. Okay, it's not a naturally aspirated screamer and it doesn't really sound of much at all when you're just cruising, but that's the way of the world now and it does at least have some character to it. It's just nice to have a new left field choice in the supercar game, but the great thing is you wouldn't just buy it to be different because for the first time since the mighty MC12, the best thing about a Maserati is the way it drives. 
big thank you to Alexander's and specifically their owner Andrew for trusting us with his personal car today. And if this is a sign of things to come with Maserati, the future looks pretty good to me.